In this problem, we were given an infinitely long wall that is uh, infinitely long in the z and the y, or sorry, in the z and the x hat directions, but is finitely thick in the y hat direction here. And its thickness is at 2d. And if we place our coordinate axis so that the origin is right in the middle of it all, we have an equal oh, d on the an equal length d in the positive y hat direction, but an equal length uh, d in the negative y hat direction. And this whole thing has a uh, volume charge density of rho. And our goal is to find the electric field everywhere. So the first step, that means that we need to find the electric field in two regions. One, the first one is on, with on the inside of this wall, the thickness of the wall, and another one will be on the outside of this wall. So we'll start with the inside of the wall and draw a uh, Gaussian surface that has symmetry uh, in the in the normal, in the same direction as the electric field. And we know the electric field is going to be putting in the y hat direction because this is uh, infinitely thick, right? So that means that any contribution from the sides to this Gaussian surface are going to be canceled out from some contribution from the other side of the, contrib uh, of the, of the Gaussian surface, again, because this is uh, infinitely long in these directions. And we'll just say our Gaussian surface has some area A. So imagine this is kind of hard to draw, but imagine this uh, little pillbox or this cube, this this uh, rectangle uh, that's it's embedded within this uh, Gaussian or within the wall, uh, with equal symmetry, so that the uh, the z and the x hat plane um, split this thing right down the middle. So we have uh, a distance y on the front and a distance negative y on the back right here. So we'll go ahead and start with our definition of Gauss's law. Should be relatively quick for uh, this one right here. So of course our electric field is dotted with our area and our we expect the electric field to point, be pointing the y in the negative y hat direction. So is our areas, our areas. There's an area A on the front and area A on the back, and both of those normal vectors point in the same direction as the electric field, so that electric field ends up turning into a multiplication with our area. This area is equal to uh, 2A, because there's two faces, and our charge enclosed is equal to rho times the area times the length, and then, like I said, there's a length or there's a length L or length Y on the front, and the length negative y on the back, so that total length is just going to be 2y. So we'll go ahead and work with those. This turned into a multiplication, because like I said, they're, each normal vector is pointing in the same direction. We'll go ahead and cancel out our areas here and solve for our electric field. This is technically the magnitude for now, but we'll change that in a second. So that is our area. Of course, it's a function of y because as it grows bigger and bigger, it encompasses more of the charge, so that makes sense. And then um, since we said that the, we knew by symmetry that the electric field would be pointing in the negative and positive y hat direction, so we can just go ahead and drop our magnitude signs and put our y hat to uh, make sure it answers the mail for the full uh, information for it. For the second part of the, uh, the problem, we're going to find the electric field both uh, now on the outside. So once it breaks this threshold, once we grow this Gaussian surface, this Gaussian surface, so it still has a length of 2y, but now in, uh, it encompasses uh, all of the thickness of it. So once it goes out any further out here, it doesn't encompass any further uh, electric charge, and it just eventually sees an infinite wall. So we follow the same process here. So we can just jump to the... Uh, multiplication here to save some time. So where y is greater than d, we'll jump to the multiplication because we know that the vectors are still going to be pointing in the same direction. Uh, the Gaussian surface is still 2a, right? We didn't, doesn't really change, but the, the q enclosed, that's what's different up here. So the q enclosed is actually a, is a rho times a, still the same, times 2, but instead of y, it's now 2d because again, it stops, uh, it stops encompassing more charge once it goes past 2D, so that's the limit right there. And then we go ahead and uh, write our proportionality constant. We'll go ahead and cancel out some like terms. 
solve for the electric field. Of course, we know it's in the y hat direction, just like before. And then we'll go ahead and write the rest of this, so which is just going to be rho times d. Let's scoot this y hat over there. And that makes sense. That is our uh, that is the electric field for an infinitely uh, large wall uh, with these dimensions. So that seems to make sense here. I think we're on the right track, and it doesn't. Need, it's it's a constant value because the more you zoom out, the more wall infinite wall it sees, and it, it just basically sees an infinite wall no matter how far away you get once you break that threshold. And the last part of the problem is to draw a plot. So if we go ahead and it's a plot of the magnitude of the electric field. So we'll just go draw the magnitude. And since our only variable is y, so we can just say that this is just a positive y and negative y at directions. And so we have uh, two main areas. Let's see here. One, two, three. Just make sure this is uh, drawn to scale-ish, right? So we'll call this negative d. And we'll call this positive d, right? So if we look at this value right here, uh, as y grows positive, 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 it, it keeps growing up and up and up until it hits, uh, encompasses, hits this wall. And then it encompasses all of the, uh, the charge density that it can see. And then it just basically maintains a constant value because like I said, the more you zoom out, the more it just sees an infinite wall. So what? Well, it, and it grows linearly, so what we, what we can do is just say that it just grows linearly up until this point, and then it just drops off where there's a value up here, and the drop off is the uh, uh, 1 over epsilon naught rho times d. That's that constant value where it sees the infinite wall. And in this one right here, that's the value that we had right here, which is a 1 over epsilon naught uh, rho times y. And that's a, it's a linear value right here. And on the other side, once if we put our point out from here, if we point the point inside here, it still encompasses more and more electric charge, but then it points it off uh, in the, it just sees a negative um, value as, as you zoom out because you have a negative y hat value, which changes the electric field in terms of our coordinate axis. So it grows linearly up until a certain point here. And you know, it doesn't, wasn't quite to scale, but should just be a straight line that bisects the uh, uh, the coordinate value, the, the zero hat, the zero value, but then it grows, grows, grows in, in accordance with, of course, the negative value that we had uh, up here, and then it drops off for a negative one over epsilon naught rho times d. And so that's what it looks like for uh, the plot for this problem right here.